Afternoon folks, welcome to the Roby Shed. This is the Roby steam engine, which was built in 1905, which makes it 117 years old. And originally, it didn't work here in Burton, it ran in this maltings here. This is the sleeper maltings over in Lincolnshire. And the reason the bass have built their large maltings out here is because that's where all the barley was grown in the fields around it. So it's in a nice central location, and the barley can be carried by horse and dray into the maltings, where it would have gone through the malting process. And what the engine would have done there is it would have powered all of the mechanical equipment, things like pumps, pulleys, conveyor belts, and anything else that needed mechanical power. Because in those days, no electricity and no electric motors. So this would have been your one central power source connected to everything to give it power. Um, so this was steam powered, and how it was connected to everything else on site was a process called line shafting. Uh, if you've never seen line shafting before, there's a nice diagram up here. So in the corner, we've got our power source which is a piston inside a cylinder going back and forth. And that then turns our large flywheel as it is here. On the outside of this flywheel, in the black section, you can see there's eight grooves. In each one of those grooves, there would have been a rope, inch and a half thick diameter each. Um, and as they went around the flywheel, the flywheel turned, it would pull on the rope to turn all these various shafts. And there's two miles of this line shafting at the sleeve of malting, and hundreds of individual pieces of equipment taking power at any point. And this one engine alone could have powered the entire site. It would have been going quite a lot faster than this. So that's about 15 to 20 revolutions per minute on the flywheel. Uh, originally, it would have been doing 70 revolutions per minute. So about one revolution a second, really fast. And that would have given you 200 horsepower. So really incredible machine. They didn't just have this one engine. Uh, you see in the picture of the engine room, there was this engine and also there was a sister engine. And the idea was one engine would be running and the other one could be under maintenance. And when they needed to shut the engine down for maintenance on that one, they could start a sister engine up and carry on production. It was very important that everything that the Maltings had a backup. So uh, from those days, beer was critical in this culture. Because all of the sewage and the um, chemicals from industry was dumped in the river, you wouldn't want to be drinking that water. Uh, it would make you very ill. So even back then, doctors would say, don't drink water drink beer uh, and that's because the alcohol in the beer would kill the bacteria and it would kill the parasites so it's actually safer to drink so people would drink about eight pints a day and it could be anything from three or four percent or anything up to twelve percent they just drink about eight pints a day so what a nice life that would be i don't think the medical advice is still the same today regarding drinking beer over water you probably want to check that out particularly if you're driving so look into that uh, the engines, they ran at sleep and maltings until the 1960s, that's when the maltings closed down. Uh, the engines were brought here in Burton in 77, and they've been a permanent exhibit ever since. You can see that we run it just nice and slow, under steam, uh, for prosperity and for visitors to see. So that's the history of the engine. Now from the technical side of how this engine works. So we start off with um, one of these, this is the front panel of a Lancashire boiler. And I say from panel because they're actually 30 feet long, about 11 feet through, and they were about 30,000 litres of water in. And the two doors in the front, that's where you shovel your coverage, and behind each one is a firebox. Four foot wide, six foot deep. Uh, and then as the air travels around the fire, it gets incredibly hot, about four to 600 degrees Celsius in there. And that hot gas then travels down the length of the boiler, and it transfers some of its heat energy to the surrounding water. Just like a giant kettle, really. But we're not going to let steam come out of the top of the boiler. We're going to keep it contained so that we get high pressure steam. And it's that pressure in the steam that stores energy that we can use to power our steam engine. So that steam will come out of the top of the boiler about 100 pounds per square inch, 100 psi, comes along the pipe and into the engine. First thing we've got on the engine is the device is the regulator or the main valve. This is how we control how much steam is coming into the engine and how fast the fire will go. From here, the steam will come into this nice round section. This is the high pressure cylinder. And what we've got inside here is the piston rod currently on one end coming straight through the other side. And fixed onto the piston rod is a large disc called a piston which is currently travelling back and forth. And how we get the steam to move uh, the piston to the other side, you've got an inlet valve and a bottle, an exhaust valve, and depending on the location of the piston, which the valve will be open. So when the piston is located at this end of the cylinder, open this inlet valve, bringing that high pressure steam, pushing the piston, 
down the other end of the cylinder. And when the piston reaches that other end, we're looking the opposite in that valve, we're looking this in, out that valve, the exhaust valve, that will switch the pressure difference and force the piston back the end. And it's an automatic process to pull both valve rods and the back of the engine. So it's pushing back and forth. So I mentioned that the seam came in here at 100 psi. By the time you push the piston, it's used most of its energy um, when it's an exhaust gas here. It's probably down to about 13 psi. So it's used most of its energy, but that steam is still has quite a lot of energy left. So all the exhaust steam from here, we don't just release into the atmosphere because we'll be throwing away quite a lot of energy. So all the exhaust steam from here goes down the exhaust pipe and it comes up into here. This is the low pressure cylinder. It's very similar to the high pressure cylinder because uh, it's doing the exact same job. They're both pushes and piston rods in the same direction. They're working in tandem. But you'll notice it's quite a lot larger uh, because as the steam loses pressure, it increases in volume. So make sure we use all that steam, all that energy, it's slightly larger so it all fits in. Um, in here, pressure then goes from 30 psi down to about 5. So you can see it's going to a lot more energy by adding the increasing the efficiency. Uh, unfortunately, the steam that comes out here doesn't have that energy left, so it's not really worth the number of steam that you have to use, it's just not that much energy. But what we do have is this box on the end, this is a condenser. Now, what happens inside here is the steam comes in and it gets sprayed by a jet of cold water. So it makes it hot steam and cold water. The first thing you get from that reaction is hot water that's released from the steam. That hot water that got from the condenser back into the boiler and go through the cycle again. And when the steam condenses into the water, it also decreases the pressure and creates a partial vacuum. And we can use that low pressure to pull on a piston inside the condenser. So here, high pressure pushes on pistons. In here, low pressure pulls on pistons. And all three are working together on the piston rod, pushing it back and forth. You can see the piston rod stretch from one end of the engine all the way to the other end of the engine. Like the engine the, uh, and through the connecting rod, <laughs> see how that linear motion is then used to turn the flywheel and power the mounting. That's the basics of how the steam engine works. Um, so the engine is now running at 100 psi. And the reason we're running at 100 psi is because we're using the engine to push the piston forward. So we're going to be pushing the piston forward and forward any metal on metal surfaces to decrease the friction so that we're not having to replace the components. And another system that we've got, this one that's spinning around here, this is a Watt centrifugal governor, uh, named after James Watt, who invented it. And what it's doing is it's limiting the top speed of the flywheel. Uh, so it's designed to turn at 70 revolutions per minute. If it went any faster, uh, there is a chance that the outer balance force created by the ropes going around it such a strong outer balance force it will shear the shaft that's holding it onto the engine. And if you break that shaft, the flywheel weighs six tons and the rate of that it's turning, it's got a lot of momentum. If it breaks free, it's not just going to fall down and stop, it would have so much momentum it would roll straight through that wall and ironically next door we've got more some more jewelry and we wouldn't want that to sweet. <laughs> Definitely not. Tenting, There's an we, idea. we want to keep, we have to preserve the artifacts, and that's our priority. So we're not going to do that because they won't give the flywheel back, I know that. And that's the basics of how this flywheel works and uh, the engine works. Are there any questions? Anything might have missed?